Well, welcome to the Orion Area Chamber's second annual State of the Community Luncheon. My name is Joyce Donaldson and I'm President and CEO of the Orion Area Chamber. Since 1950, the Chamber has been dedicated to creating a healthy local economy and building a strong environment for economic growth and stability. In ongoing efforts to achieve these lofty goals, we represent business to government, advocate for business-friendly legislation, provide access to local, regional, state, and federal leaders. Today, we are super proud to present timely and relevant information about our community. Our featured speakers include, as a tag team, Jerry Narsh, Village of Lake Orion Council President, and Matt Gibb, DDA Executive Director, Heidi Mercer, Lake Orion Community Schools Superintendent, and Chris Barnett, our Orion Township Supervisor. We are proud to provide accessibility to local leaders, and today we have quite a few here in the audience, and I would just like to introduce them. We have Orion Township Supervisor Chris Barnett, Orion Township Treasurer Kim Urbanowski, Township Trustees Julia Darrymple, Brian Burney, Mike Flood, and Matt Pfeiffer, and we also have Fire Chief Ryan Allen here with us today. From the Village of Lake Orion, we have Council President Jerry Narsh, Village Council Member Carl Sorowski, DDA Chair Debbie Burgess, and DDA Board Member Elena Campbell. The Chamber has a passionate team of leaders, and many of our board members are here today, and I would just like you to stand up and wave hi. Um, we are a mighty staff of two, as you might know, Jillian and myself, and um, I wanna give a big round of applause to Jillian as well. She handles everything, it's just great. Thank you, Jillian. You know, Jillian is the, is the beautiful voice behind the phone and is always uh, just great with our members. So thank you, Jillian. We have with us today our Vice Chair, Teresa Doan, Genesis Credit Union, if you'd like to stand and wave. We have our Treasurer, Steve Wandry, Union Home Mortgage. Tanya Hamilton from North Oakland Community Coalition. Chase McMunn from Orion Township Public Library. Aaron Watley, Orion Township Parks and Recreation. Jennifer Whitaker, DT Energy. And Janice Zale, Zale Wealth Management Group. You also saw some beautiful faces meeting and greeting you this morning. Our Chamber Ambassadors were there at the door helping us out as well. And in the audience today, we have Krista Andrews, Practically Perfect Vacations with Krista, Patrice de Trapini from Aflac, Dave Clonky, Right Hook Branded Merchandise, Lisa Trudell, Flagstar Bank, Jennifer Kangater, Michigan United Credit Union, and Don Neely, Seniors Helping Seniors. And Don has extra duty today because she is going to be our timekeeper. Thank you, Don. With the vision and passion of our leadership team, the Chamber has really been able to flourish this year, and we have a lot of exciting news to share. First off, we have 61 new members, and I think 62 is in the audience, <laughs> so thank you for that. 62 members for a total of 327 Chamber members. With that, with all of our um, leadership team and everything, we have really fun news to share, and that is the Chamber office is going to be moving. We are going to be moving downtown. We're so happy. I can't wait to eat at all the restaurants and be able to shop downtown. It's going to be really fun. So we'll be located on the corner of Shadbolt and North Lapeer in the historical Spresser Ogden building. It's this building here on the corner and our office will be right there. So I call it the West Wing, Jillian calls it the garage, and one of our architects calls it the carriage house. So I'm not sure which I'm going to actually wound up choosing, but what do you say, carriage house? It's kind of cool. There is Jillian, this is the inside of it. We're um, happy to report we have beautiful crown moldings, woodwork, copper tin ceiling, hardwood floors, and just a lot of light. So it's kind of like historical meets urban chic. <laughs> um, so we'll be moving in less than two weeks. So we'll be moving on the 15th. If you wanna come and help pack, we will be starting to pack tomorrow. So just call me, we'll be happy to have you. 
Um, also, kind of exciting news. Um, we have 51 members that are in the trades, builders, and suppliers um, industries. And so we decided to have them all meet up a couple times this year. We met up again last week, and we produced this trades, builders, and suppliers resource guide. There'll be some on the table there if you'd like to take a couple. Um, they, this includes our chamber members that are builders, architects, flooring, painters, closets, custom furniture, plumbers, building supplies, and much, much more. So if you're thinking about doing any renovations or if you're moving, please don't hesitate to use our chamber members. That's what we're here for, and we want to encourage you all to use our members. Um, lastly, our 2024 Impact Awards will be held here. I hate to say it, Jillian, but less than two months, or just about two months from today. <laughs> our, uh, it actually, it is two months from today, our Impact Awards. So look for those nomination forms to be coming out in the newsletter soon, and please be sure to nominate your favorite um, member for an award. And award sponsorships are available had to say that. <laughs> um, I want to thank our sponsors because we couldn't achieve all of these lofty goals that the chamber has without our sponsors. So our title sponsor, thank you Michigan United Credit Union, you'll be hearing from Jim in just a moment. Our corporate sponsors, Mosheri Companies and Great Lakes Crossing Outlets, thank you. Our partner sponsors, Corwell Health, DT Energy, ITC Michigan, and Joyology of Lake Orion. And our champion sponsors, Design House, Genesis Credit Union, JM Visuals LLC, Keller Williams Collaborative, Moonstone Real Estate, Paint Creek Country Club, Forest Ca Rainforest Cafe, and Victory Motor Superstore. Thank you. I'd also like to give a big round of applause to the Lake Orion Review and for Orion Neighbor te Neighborhood Television. They really help us get the good word out there about the chamber, about our community. So thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. When we speak of sponsors, we would like to thank our title sponsor, Michigan United Credit Union. And here with us today to say a few words is Jim Baylor, Vice President of Marketing with Michigan United Credit Union. Come on up, Jim. Thank you, Joyce, um, for that great introduction. Um, as Joyce says, I'm Jim Baylor, um, VP of Marketing at Michigan United Credit Union. I've had the privilege of being with that organization for the last 14 years. It's gone by really fast. So um, today I'd like to introduce our team that's out here with me. I've got Kathy Smith. She's our um, member experience officer. Tony Carson is our Lake Warren branch manager. Rebecca Gilroy is our marketing specialist. Linda Hatfield is our VP of business development. Um, a lot of you know Jennifer Cangetter. She is our business development rep and in our Waterford branch manager, uh, Renee Doyle. Um, so thank you guys for coming out here today. Um, at Michigan United Credit Union, community is not just a word, it is woven into the fabric of who we are and what we stand for. In fact, it's at the heart of our vision statement to enrich our members' financial lives and the communities we serve as we move forward together. One of our core values is community engagement, which drives us to encourage our employees to participate and local events that shape the village of Lake Orion and the Orion area. Today it is an honor to stand among many of you representing businesses and unwavering commitment to this community. Your efforts go above and beyond day in and day out. Make an Orion Township and the village of Lake Orion the best place to live, work, and grow. We deeply appreciate the partnerships that unite us all. Orion Township, the village of Lake Orion, the Orion Area Chamber, the Lake Orion Downtown Development Authority, Orion Library, Orion Schools, Orion Events, and Orion Parks. These collaborations have strengthened the bonds within our community, creating connections that help each of us thrive and grow as individuals and businesses. Thank you for everyone for what you do every day to continue to com um, contribute to this community, and together we can build and uh, make this a remarkable place to live. Thank you. Thank you for coming out today. I know you're busy with a new move, a new house move, and a relatively new baby that keeps you on your toes as well. So thank you. Um, 
I would like to thank all of our President Circle members that are here today, and I also want to just mention there are some expo tables in the back. There's a lot of cool swag. Get to know DT Energy, Michigan United Credit Union, and Mosheri companies. They're in the back, and they have some great stuff, so stop by either when you're at lunch or um, I know a lot of you already went over there, but they'll also be here afterwards, so thank you. Next, I would like to introduce our tag team. The first up is Jerry Narsh. He is the Village of Lake Orion Council President. Many of you know Jerry. He's been here and lived in Lake Orion for 39 years. Jerry served on the Lake Orion Police Department for 19 years and retired in 2019 from the Police Department. He's also served on the Lake Orion Village Council since 2019 and has been president since November 2022. So come on up, Jerry. You'll click. Okay, thank you. And I, you know, last year I got teased relentlessly because I kept going over. So I was advised when I came in today that there was going to be a group going. So I'm setting my own timer because I'm splitting my time with my partner Matt at the DDA <laughs> right there. So I'm going to set my own timer. Um, pardon the pun, but I'm going to self-police. Here we go. I want to thank everybody for being here today. Thank you uh, to uh, the Chamber, and uh, thank you Joyce and Jillian, Pink Creek Country Club. How do I summarize in five minutes the Village of Lake Orion and the success that we have? I didn't do it last year in 15, so I'm going to try to do it in five, but I assure you that our DDA Executive Director is going to pick up where I left off. Um, you know, having a thriving, growing municipality doesn't happen by accident, does it? Nothing happens by, really, accident. And it, you are either a community where people are fleeing from or heading to. And I am proud and honored to say as I'm standing up here today that we are a community, the Orient area, where people are coming to. And that doesn't happen by accident. You need to have vision. And not just vision from the government end, but the community leaders, the people that live here, that they bond together and uh, want to improve all of the services that make us want to come to this community. You've got to have leaderships on boards and commissions, which means volunteerism, right? Because there's no money in that. You're there because you love your community and you want to see these things grow and thrive. You've got to have investment, not just investment from financial aspects from business, though we need you, and I'll get to that. But you've got to have action. And action comes in the form of what our DDA, our chamber is doing, and our boards and commissions, and the overall policies that make people want to come to your community and not flee it. There's a difference. And you've got to have exceptional schools. You're going to hear from our superintendent of schools, Heidi. She's here today. And you've got to have exceptional schools because you want to draw families. So we need to maintain a healthy community and economic ecosystem. How do we do that? And again, that doesn't happen by accident. We haven't stumbled our way into success. We found the path and we stayed on it. And every person in this room, wait, okay, I just had to make sure I could see it. All right. Every person in this room is a part of that success. And, you know, what you want to create in a good community is not just to involve drawing business. You want to involve people. I am so thankful for the Machiri Group. I love the developments that are here. Um, I was one of the voices that pushed hard for that. Um, you know, I was pushing a patrol car and looking at a downtown that was in depression back in the 80s. I was looking at a community that people were fleeing from. And I was looking at lakefront property that had businesses on it. And it's like, you know, that really needs residential community. Our development that's coming into the village comes here because we're improving our infrastructure. We're improving our parking management. Let's face it, we've got an 1859 town with streets and infrastructure and parking ability uh, that's needed for 2024 economic growth and commerce. Those are tough challenges. So we're fixing those. Our water and sewer programs, our streets, our parking infrastructure, the purchase of the lumber yard, you're going to hear a lot more about that in a minute. Those are the things that not just draw business, but they draw people to our community. And you know, one of the goals that we want to have in that economic ecosystem is to kind of be like a self-licking ice cream cone, right? 
the proverbial, um, it just gets better and it takes care of itself and it just keeps getting better. So Elena, sorry, if we created that, you wouldn't sell any ice cream, you know. Well, you'd buy one. You just gotta sell it for a lot. Um, but the status quo, having a community that is status quo is not good for business and it's not good for people who move here and live here. We come to live, work, and play and thrive. So we got to constantly feed that ecosystem. Why did we succeed? Why are we succeeding? Why are people coming here? Why is business coming? And I think that's what everybody in this room is partnering to do. It's having great partnerships with our neighboring communities, our business leaders, our leaders within the communities, and having that vision that we all agree upon is that is a positive trajectory. And we want the right people in the right places to make sure those happen. So we have a master plan that we're following in the village and the Mashiri group with new housing and uh, that type of mixed use development in our downtown district using lake property wisely. Um, our infrastructure is being attended to. Those are tough choices. We've taken those on, um, but, but we have to because what we want in the village is to have that the 48362 is where you come for your return on investment. We thank you for investing in us. And that means I'm done. Ha! So, I'm gonna introduce my partner. Yeah, I know, I stopped, believe it or not. I set the bar though, just saying brother. Just saying brother. Um, so let me introduce my tag team partner today, um, Matt Gibb, and this is going from memory because I don't have a, a bio. So Matt was born in a small, no. Um, I remember Matt, he was township supervisor, he served on the township board, he was on the planning commission, something like that, okay, he was township supervisor, he is a licensed practicing attorney, and well, you know, my brother's a lawyer, but at least mom has one son she can be proud of. <laughs> but most importantly, he, I think, sharpened his economic teeth, working for Elbrooks Patterson as a part of his economic development as uh, one of the assistant executive Oakland County executives and did a phenomenal job there. Um, he has uh, moved on to other factors, and the most important is he is now our executive director at the Lake Orion DDA, using all of those talents and his skills as an attorney and specializing in uh, markets and resale. So those blessings are going to be for us today. So, Matt Gibb. So it's great to see everyone again. I see lots of uh, new faces, but most um, I know. Um, introducing of uh, local officials is great, but one that got particularly left out is the most key person if you're talking about economic sustainability. And the fact that David Goodlow is sitting over here hitting up the building department and all of economic development starts and ends with that man. All the other people are just eye candy like Pfeiffer and the rest. So um, congrats to you, Dave. You do a great job in, in overseeing everything. Our great chief as well at the fire department. It's good to see both of you. Um, so they gave me a few more minutes than Jerry, but um, I think it's cool that Lake Orion is doing the one key thing that any community that has economic sustainability has to have. It's identifying who it is and it's darn well being that. And if you're a community that's striving to be someone else, uh, then you're not going to go very far when it comes to economic sustainability long term. Um, this is not the most sherry boat. They were in last place um, at the heat I saw. Um, the, the family members were actually dragging out the side. It was crazy. Um, they're one step better than our township supervisor, who was too scared to get in the boats this year. Um, had Oh, that's right. You were the drummer one time, that's for sure. Um, but welcome and greetings from Lake Orion. Um, this is the slide that I prepared for Jerry. Um, Jerry's been a stalwart and a champion of our community for some time, and he pinned this little postcard to his family in Orion. It kind of sounds like how Jerry talks. Yeah, this town's really neat, and I like it here. Um, the most important part is the end of it. Uh, Jerry has decided to have someone else take some leadership shoes in Lake Orion in the village. Um, we're both sad about that and we're ecstatic that he's going to continue to provide his leadership and support in other ways. And so Jerry, on a career well served in leadership in Lake Orion, we thank you for that. Thank you. 
so now we got, we've got some new leaders. Um, they're a little bit more crazy than Jerry and the gang. Uh, uh, and I would recognize a couple of them. Janet Bloom joins us. Uh, Janet, raise your hand. A lot of people already know you. Uh, Janet comes from the west side of town, and um, she's our assistant director, and I'm the executive director, but it depends on the day. Um, we kind of do co-roles and dual roles there. She formerly used to work in places like Farmington, um, where she was instrumental there, and they just got nominated to be a finalist in the National Great American Main Street Award. Um, and so bring a little bit of that charm and talent to us there, Janet. But welcome to the team. She's been here about six months now, as have I, and I couldn't be more proud. We've got some DA board members, particularly Debbie Burgess, who um, is in the bottom corner there. Uh, Debbie's our board chair, and she's a champion. Um, and we just got accredited again as a, as a national accredited Main Street program. So your downtown team is pretty good. And so what's happening? There is a ton of things happening. The greatest thing about the Village of Lake Orion is we can fly through this because I know that all of you participate in these things, that you enjoy the fact that we get picnics and others to donate flowers and streetscapes, so much so um, that most of the American Bloom video, which we all voted for, and congrats, Supervisor, you guys won that video contest again, which is so instrumental, was filmed in this beautiful downtown we call Lake Orion. I've long said that we are Orion. We're not necessarily Lake Orion or Orion Township or Orion Schools. Sorry, Heidi. Um, we're all just Orion. And so we've got this beautiful town town. And next year, you'll see the American and Bloom work. And Chris might touch on that. Um, we're responding from COVID. Uh, who was like me? I remember sitting in the snow on a high top stool at 313, so desperate just to be involved in our town again back during COVID that we sat in the snow and had a glass of wine. Um, and felt stupid, but felt normal again. Well, our downtown is a little bit back to normal. It's getting there. We have more than 70 participants dressed up as zombies um, with Lloyd and the gang from Ed's Broadway Gift and kind of crawl through our town lately. And you think, well, that's not a big deal, but it is a big deal. It means that people are understanding and welcoming things that are happening. And so this is just a little bit of the highlight. You know, we redid with the Art Center, our great partners, and I know they're great directors here too. Um, uh, Ms. Nicosia, she's, they, they redid the signs for us for the Flint Street Alleyway. We've just got this great team in our downtown. Um, this week is the Garfield movie. Um, uh, it's going to be kind of cool. Last week we wanted to do it, but the first hurricane hit and prayers for those in the south and other places that are, are really struggling. I've got friends that are still stranded um, in the Asheville area, uh, but they're alive, thankfully. But the Garfield movie was postponed last week to this week. Um, so movies in the park, um, uh, the robotics team from Oakview is going to be our volunteers and thank goodness one of their dads is going to dress as Garfield, otherwise it was going to be me I guess or Jerry or somebody else. Um, but things are good, we've got a strong to-do list. Um, things that are coming up, uh, I would be remiss if we didn't say things are coming up. Um, we've restored the parade, uh, the Halloween extravaganza which is one of our most popular events in our downtown was without the parade because of COVID. And if you don't know what the parade is, then you must not have kids uh, because we will be parading down Anderson Street. Our great new chief is helping us with that. Um, so the parade is coming up and this weekend is the, the tours of the cemetery, which always sell out. So go to our website. Um, our website's pretty cool. You know, sign up on Facebook and follow us. But what you all came for here is really is what the heck's going on down there. Okay, we know you guys have great events and it's really great and we would love to have all of you participate more and volunteer, but let me give you just a snapshot. Um, we know what Mosheri's doing um, and it's awesome. If you see it from the lake, it's even more awesome. And so congratulations to our friends and, and um, I'm glad you didn't bring your brother because you should get all the credit. Um, uh, and it's really cool what they're doing and there's gonna be more. I know that Mo Sherry's committed to this town and we're grateful for that. In the top right corner, Jeff Schmitz, who's been a champion of our downtown. If you've been to Bitter Tom's, or you live in one of those beautiful apartments, you know that Jeff does great work. Um, Jeff is uh, zoning board tonight. Uh, I expect uh, no, no influence there, Chief, but uh, expect that his variance will be approved. And then he's gonna break ground on another four-story building in the downtown. It's gonna be retail on the first floor. He wanted to do residential, but now we're thinking office because we have an opportunity to attract some more integrated younger tech companies here. Um, in the bottom left, the school project is finally gonna start, the old Eman Center, the high school. Um, we've been kind of waiting. I'm looking at my school friends. Um, uh, that process of acquiring uh, their property and allowing them to acquire Chris's property and Chris to acquire the Great Lakes Athletic Club and the dominoes all go in our favor as a community, but that historic preservation project uh, will get going. 
Um, we've got lots of other cool things. If you've driven through downtown, you see there's a lot of construction by the Legion. It sounds like we're going to get an actual takeout deli, a deli counter deli downtown, which would be great. Um, we're also going to get some integrated companies there. Some of our other, other buildings are built out. We've got a heartfelt space that's going to be a sensory room for young people. And so the downtown is kind of, um, it's cooking. We've got a lot of work to do, though, uh, in our downtown. The economic numbers for Michigan are... Um, Interesting. We seem to be breaking the mold. Um, retail, small box retail of 10 employees or less is down 36% year over year. Restaurant community of the type that we have in our community um, is down 42% year over year. And most restaurants in Michigan feel they won't get back to pre-COVID numbers for four more years. So how about that in the waiting line at Sagebrush, which we still seem to have. And so we seem to break the mold. We know who we are. But I promised Joyce I'd stay on time, and I know you all you want to hear about the lumber yard too. So we acquired the lumber yard, meaning the village, us and the DDA did it together. Uh, we uh, sent out some bonds last year before Janet and I were on the team, um, and we own a, a, a parcel there that is great. It's faded a little bit here on this picture and some artwork because it doesn't look like that. It looks like this. So what we inherited was a great family, the Knowles family, that used the lumber yard for 100 and, almost 111 years. As a business, they actually own the Rochester Lumber Yard, which is um, in Rochester on both ends of the railroad. Um, this place is historic in the sense that it's key to, it brought all the materials that built us. And so when you think about the lake and the Lake Orion and what Mosheri's recreating, um, none of that happens 100 years ago without this lumber yard. And so we're gonna preserve it. Um, doesn't look like it, right? Um, hundreds of old uh, dilapidated cans we've been pulling out. We're gonna properly dispose of that. Uh, we've got a big project on our hands. Um, the chamber just offered if we wanted to help them pack and move, I'll trade you. You guys can do this and we'll do that. Um, um, but it is going. So what have we been doing? We've been cleaning it up. So in the last two weeks, um, we've had uh, 21 40-yard semi-truck uh, uh, in and out of the site. So 21 40-yard dumpsters of debris. We haven't even started to tear anything down, just garbage, just wood and metal and concrete and everything else. So we've been cleaning the site up. Um, if you go out there now and you walk on the Paint Creek Trail, you're like, I'll speed up. Um, you'll, you'll, you'll be like, hey, this is awesome. What are we gonna try to do to save the main barn? We were able to get a grant through the Main Street program in Oakland County for almost $600,000. It's gonna help support preserving the main barn. Uh, we're also going to preserve the two original structures, the oil house and the coal house. Those have historic significance. Again, we'll go after pre-designation that will allow us to get the National Trust involved. And we'll make a really kick-ass space. Sorry my language, but that's what it's going to be. If you imagine what we could do there, we're planning to work with 20 Front Street and our gazebo series will move to the barn, but we'll integrate it in more of a music town. We'll be able to fit upwards of 1,000 people at concerts in the barn. We'll have events in the barn. It's a 6,000 square foot floor. Um, that we'll put to ample use. The rest of the site is probably going to get torn down except the two old structures and one of the structures in the back corner which will become a trailhead. But imagine if you will the brainstorming that's happened about having farmers markets and moving pumpkin markets and creating greater ideas about what we could do with the historic space um, in our north end. Now everybody says we needed parking. We'll do that too. There's plenty of room for that. Um, and so we're moving forward with the lumber yard. Um, what do we get to? What can be across the street from Mosheri? What can be the gateway of our, our downtown? Um, this type of building. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to restore the old office building out front. It was built in 1910. It's going to become a historic marker. What will go inside? We don't know. That'll be all of your idea. That'll be the ideas that come to us as a community. But we can reach this. We can build something that's new that, that really characterizes our history. This building's in Calgary. Um, it's not here, but guess what it looks like? It looks like the original ice house that was built on that property before the lumber yard when we were a community that supplied ice to Detroit, before we supplied great music and great dance and dragons uh, in the lake. And so they gave me just a few minutes. I think I'm probably done. Um, this is how we end. The work continues. Um, you'll see Janet and I looking more like that than we will this. Joyce made me wear a suit coat. The lumber yard's awful dirty, as is uh, repairing fences and planting flowers and making sure things in our downtown make people feel extremely welcome. Um, we've rebranded re our facade grant program. Um, our small business growth and development is going to be done by analytics and not just uh, we hope somebody comes and rents something. Um, we will be uh, broadening our marketing partnerships and the holiday lighting is going to happen. Sing and Stroll is coming around the the bin, the carriage rides are coming back this spring. 
Um, and I'll announce this as the last thing. There's one thing that we have in this town is great vision. Um, and we've got a lot of volunteers. Um, but what we don't have in this town is a pipeline for that. We don't have the ability, and I know that Chris suffers with this too at the township, we don't have a pipeline of leadership, meaning we haven't invited people in to learn about what we do on the inside, how the soup works. And so we will be modeling a program after Leadership Oakland at the DDA on a small scale for the Oakland region, meaning all of us, that will start to build out, here's how all of this gets done. This is why the chief loves it and why Chris loves it and why I, Matt Gibb, love it, and we'll be building that out. So I went a few minutes over. Thanks for everything all of you do uh, in the downtown and elsewhere. We are one Orient community. When we talk about bringing people in, as the chief said, it's, they come here not because it's a cute downtown, and they don't come here because Jenny got America in bloom to recognize how beautiful we are. And they don't come here even though he will say otherwise because our leadership at the township is so great. They come here because of who we are, because we have dragon spirit and dragons in the lake, and we ride on trails, and we have great senior resources, and we build great housing, and you integrate kind of who we are as a community, and we wear it on our sleeve. So with that, I'm glad to be part of all of you, and the DDA is super excited for the next chapter. And Joyce, I'll turn it back to you. Thanks. Great, thank you so much for sharing all that super fun and exciting news. I didn't hear a timeline on that, but um, hopefully it'll be soon. I can't wait for the big uh, lumber yard project to come to fruition. So thank you for that. We are going to break for lunch. Haley will be um, announcing your table, starting with table number one. So thank you and enjoy. We'll be back in a bit. Orion Township, where every day feels like a vacation. It's where the fun never stops. We're talking epic parties, live music, and good vibes. This town knows how to have a blast. Nature's playground? We've got it. From hiking to swimming, we're surrounded by pure awesomeness. Shopping, eating, or just hanging out, our local businesses are the bee's knees. And yeah, we've got plenty of them as well. We're a community that sticks together, just like peanut butter and jelly. We're stronger together. Orion Township is proud to host the America in Bloom Symposium in 2025. Join us as we celebrate our commitment to creating vibrant, sustainable communities. So, what are you waiting for? Come join the fun. Orion Township is calling your name. We have an exciting afternoon still planned for you. So we are gonna hear from Heidi Mercer and Supervisor Chris Barnett. Um, so our first speaker up now is Heidi Mercer. Heidi is the new superintendent of the school, has been on the job uh, for three or four months now, and is well known in our community. This is her 28th year in the Lake Orion Community School District, and she has served in a variety of roles throughout the district. And I might mention that Heidi was our Youth Impact Award winner at our Impact Awards last year, so I got to learn all about you last year, not knowing that you would be the new superintendent. So we loved Ben, but we're so excited also that Heidi is here because she has so much experience with the Lake Orion Community Schools. For the previous 16 years, she led, academ led the academics department and the assistant superintendent, or she was the academic department and the assistant superintendent position. I might have murdered that, sorry. <laughs> um, guiding the district to a reputation as one of the state's most admired and accomplished. Prior to the role, she served as a special education teacher, an assistant principal, and a middle school principal within Lake Orion Community School. So I'd like to welcome Heidi. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you. All right. Good afternoon. Okay. As Joyce had mentioned, um, I have been in the district for quite a few years. Um, and so while I'm new in this position, I'm not new to the district, which I have learned is a very good thing um, because we are able to just pick up and keep rolling. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, I do have a Brady Bunch for a family. Um, <laughs> I am remarried and I have uh, five children, 
Two of my own girls went through the whole Lake Orion system, um, so I am proud of that. And it's hard to get a picture of just the five children. We always seem to have more than five at the house, so you'll see um, a little bit of an addition there. And then I do have um, two grand puppies that I have to put pictures of because um, my girls uh, treat them more like uh, humans than dogs, so um, you'll see them there. So a little bit about me. Um, and then you'll see our cabinet here. There are four of us on the cabinet. Um, we do have an assistant superintendent of finance, which is Andrea Curtis. Uh, Drew Tolleriton took my position, which is the assistant superintendent of teaching and learning. And then Adam Weldon is the assistant superintendent of human resources. So while we are a new cabinet and many of us um, really new in our positions, We've all been in the district for a total, I think we added this up, of 73 years between all of us. So we've been here for a little while. And then you'll see our Board of Education. Um, I'm very proud of our board of, board of Education and happy to work with them. They are a true group of people that are really committed to our community, our students, and our community. So it is truly an honor to work with them. A little bit about the district. Um, you'll see a few statistics here that I thought um, you might find interesting. Um, anywhere from our student numbers to um, the different languages um, that we have. You'll see um, on there as well um, some ethnicity uh, statistics. So that's just a few of the stats regarding Lake Orion Community Schools. This is the third year in our strategic plan. Uh, we are very excited that we do have a strategic plan. Uh, you'll see our mission and our vision and all of our strategic planning goal areas tied to that district mission and vision. So a few highlights from this plan. Again, just a few highlights. The whole plan is on our website, which we do update regularly um, to keep the community um, involved in knowing where we are at in our strategic plan. Within the teaching and learning department, um, we're taking a look. One of the goals is making sure always that our curriculum is relevant and rigorous. Uh, this year for elementary, we have adopted a new math program called Bridges. Uh, we did a big pilot last year, and this year we are in full implementation of that program. Uh, it is so far going well um, with any new program. Of course, there is a learning uh, curve, but we are seeing already uh, great gains with our students. So we're very excited about this new program. This year, we're going to take a look at our middle school electives. Every five years or so, we take a look and see uh, what we're offering regarding our middle school electives, making sure is it still relevant? Are kids still interested? Are there any other ideas that we may have for electives? Um, staff may have some different ideas and interests. We also have had students that propose different ideas. So this year, we will be taking a look at that. At the high school, we have several pilots uh, going as well this year. We are working on a world language pilot. They are um, testing some new materials. And we're also looking at our high school math as well. So um, looking in both of those areas. I am excited to say within the high school this year, we are offering a medical foundations class. And so we are slowly implementing uh, that career pathway into the high school. And right out of the gate, um, that class has a waiting list. It was, it's full for the year. So that is very, very exciting. We're very happy about that. Looking at our technology, this is something that we always need to keep on our mind. As you know, it's changing every day. The big thing with technology, of course, is artificial intelligence. Uh, and so we have been working with that and testing out some different things um, along the uh, different levels, at, particularly at the high school. Um, but this is something that we believe with AI. This is a tool um, that we are teaching our students. It's not something that we're going to be able to shove away and, and pretend it doesn't exist. Um, so we have embraced it. We continue to learn about it, and we continue to share it with our students in ways that they can use it appropriately. 
And then, of course, we always have a strong professional development plan throughout the year. Um, this is where we provide different topics to our teachers and our staff. Truly, um, we do have one of the strongest professional development uh, programs, I would say, certainly within the county and probably the state. This is one of the things that we do hear from staff that come to our district, one of the areas uh, that they point out that um, they seek Lake Orion out because they know of our professional development and how much support teachers are provided. So that is truly a highlight. And then we're also focusing on social emotional learning. You all know that mental health is a huge uh, priority on all of our minds at this point in time. And so we are doing um, quite a bit within our district regarding social emotional learning, making sure that we are educating and taking care of the whole child. And then within our human resources department, we are focusing on leadership development. In the area of education, it's hard enough to find people, but particularly also in the areas of leadership and administration. So we are working on building a cohort of teachers um, and staff in the district that are interested in leadership. And so uh, we are working with them to further develop them. We're working uh, to also establish more and more partnerships uh, throughout the community, and so um, we will continue to work on that. And we also focus on staff well-being. We have a well-being committee within our district um, that focuses on just br bringing different things to staff, how to make sure that they are taking care of themselves. Our business and finance, we recently um, passed our sinking fund, which was great to keep that going. Uh, we do have a bond that was passed in 2018. Thank, um, thank you to our community for that. Um, we are wrapping up on that bond, uh, believe it or not. Next year, we will be entering the uh, last series. And so within that bond, uh, we still have a little bit of work to do. Uh, we have next summer, we will be working on Paint Creek. We will be adding a classroom to their building, um, looking at uh, renovating a bit of their cafeteria. They will get a STEM lab as uh, like all of the other uh, elementaries. And then also next year, we'll be looking at building an auxiliary gym at the high school. Uh, the plan is to, at some point, uh, demo a part of Cirque. The demo um, part of Cirque that's coming down is going to be the auxiliary gym, so we need an auxiliary gym before we can take um, that one down. So that is in the plans for uh, next summer as well, which is much needed. And um, we are also adding quite a bit of parking uh, at the high school, which is another uh, item that is needed. But with this 2018 bond, uh, the reality has come that we are not going to make it through all of our projects um, due to inflation. Um, and so with that being said, we are looking at a future bond. Uh, potentially the board is talking about November 2025, um, which is going to be needed. One, to complete the projects that were not we're not able to complete in the 2018 bond. But also, if you remember, when we went for the 2018 bond, uh, we had $320 million worth of needs, and the bond was worth $160 million. Uh, so that other half has not gone away. And then, of course, right, we're now in 2024 and have additional needs. So um, this will be something that will be extremely important um, to our community and certainly to our schools. So uh, look for more information on that. We are just in the early stages of starting the process uh, for that. And someone had already alluded to this as well, but we are in the mix of transitioning, uh, going from our administration building and we are buying the community center, which is going to be uh, wonderful. Um, and so we're really looking forward to that. Our building, I think we've talked about it every year about you know potentially selling it and I've been around for a long time. Well, it's finally, it is going to finally happen. And so uh, we'll be moving into our new space uh, we are planning this next summer. So that will be great. And then there will be some people that are currently at Cirque.
that will be joining um, us at the community center or our new administration building. So some of those departments will include uh, central enrollment, our food service, our community enrichment, um, and special education, which will be much better for our community to be able to come to one place and deal with um, all of the things that they need to deal with rather than now it's kind of piecemeal the different departments throughout the building. Um, so that will be that will be a wonderful um, gain for us. Several recent topics, uh, hot topics, I would say in education, uh, mental health continues. Um, there was recent uh, funding that was significantly cut regarding mental health. Um, just a week ago, we did get a little of that money back. Um, but we're not restored uh, fully on that, which honestly is, at this day and age, it's really hard to understand um, why any of that money got cut. However, we are fortunate that a little bit uh, was given back. So mental health still is a huge uh, concern. Then you see artificial intelligence. That's just districts, schools trying to wrap their head around um, you know, what we're going to do and how we're going to teach and how we're going to incorporate our artificial intelligence. Another hot one is a uh, student cell phone. Um, so this is in the headlines almost daily. And one of the things um, you know, that I uh, get asked quite frequently, um, are we going to uh, ban cell phones? Um, at this point, I'm gathering information. However, there is legislation out there um, that would um, give the whole state guidelines regarding cell phones. So uh, we will see uh, regarding that. The other issue that you know is always on our minds, it's not on here, but it's, it's a given, is obviously student safety. So that is critical, something that uh, you know we are working with daily and honestly is one of the biggest, um, you know, most important focus I have on my mind every day is student safety. And then our opening uh, day was uh, themed around uh, the dragon difference. I really do feel that within our community, um, we do have a school system that does make a difference. And so this was the message to the staff is basically every day you have the opportunity to make a difference in the lives of our young people and also their colleagues and whoever else uh, they run into in the day. Um, but this was something that we, that we really sent a strong message that um, one of the things that I have loved about my career is knowing that you know, we are in a place where uh, we do have the opportunity to greatly impact people and especially young people. And so um, that's what we're here to do is to, to make a positive difference in their life. And then uh, homecoming is coming up. So everybody needs to get ready. Uh, come to the homecoming parade this coming Sunday. Uh, it will be, we will be starting at Blanche Sims. And so I hope that you'll all come out and uh, show your dragon spirit. And then our game is on Friday, October 11th. So we hope to see you there. And with that, thank you very much for having me and go dragons. Great, thank you so much and thank you for taking such great care of our children and you and your team are just amazing, so thank you. Um, it is a little bit full circle like you mentioned, so you may be in our old office, our old chamber office, and I know Chris is gonna touch, touch on uh, their new offices, so we're all just doing like musical chairs there, so that's fun. Um, so now I'd like to introduce Chris Barnett, our township supervisor. Chris was first elected as township supervisor in 2012. He is most proud of his track record of building strong relationships and collaborating with surrounding leaders and communities for the good of the region, regardless of politics. I welcome Chris. Thank you, Joyce, and thank you all. This is my favorite group to talk to, besides the fourth graders in our district. They are actually my favorite, but so good to be here among friends. Um, when I first started and I didn't know what I was doing, and I still would admit that I don't, Matt didn't teach me enough still 12 years later, but um, this was the group that kind of held me up and kept me going, um, our strong, amazing business community. And I had the privilege to serve on the board here for six or seven or eight years too. So I love you all and appreciate your investment in our community. And that's what I'm gonna to talk to you about 
the great news about what's happening in Orient Township. Right by show of hands, who attended the State of the Township Address? All of my staff and about 10 other people. <laughs> Uh, so that's your homework. There's a lot of great things. I'm not covering everything we covered there, but I want to share some of the big things happening in our community that you should know about um, that are of interest to our business community. So first off, a question. What makes a strong community? I know you all don't live here, but if you're here, you hopefully work here or, or generate revenue from this community. What makes a strong community? A place you want to live and invest. The people. What else? You're allowed to talk. That's it? Recreation. Oh. The Parks and Rec director. We did not, <laughs> we did not plan that. Good job, Aaron. Brownie points. A great downtown, and that's the DDA. Anybody else? That's great. I agree. It's, these are my schools. Thank you. Wow, that was going to be really disrespectful to our new superintendent. So you guys are on the right track, and that's our role. That's that's the way I see our role. And I think if you've heard me talk in the past, especially to you all, um, your greatest investment is when you locate your business or your home is to make sure that you're investing in a strong community, a, make sure your investment is, is a good one. Um, we wanna be the opposite of Bernie Madoff, right? Um, and so in order to do that, um, and that's kind of the, 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 the lens that everything that we do, um, because we work for you, goes through that lens in my mind. I, I'm, I came from a business background, and are we increasing and improving your investment? And I think we're doing a great job, and I'm gonna show you why. But first and foremost, uh, it's not just me. I'm the person that gets to tell the story. I say this all the time, but the credit goes to the team. Uh, and this is our current team. Uh, many of them are here. If you're a board member currently, please stand up and be recognized. And I want to take a moment to uh, say thank you to specifically to uh, Brian Burney and Kim Urbanowski, who will be moving off our board effective November 20th. They may be really happy about that, uh, but let's give them a special round of applause. And Penny Schultz, who's not here as well. Because we say it all the time, it, it, it's, a, it's a really fun job, but very often it's thankless. The people that come to our office, come to our board meetings, are generally the people that aren't excited about the work we're doing. And then I'm, ex I'm excited to talk to you about our transition, our new team. Uh, this is effective. Uh, because we have unopposed uh, seats that our people are running for, we can tell you definitively that that will be your board effective November 5th, and they will be sworn in at noon on November 20th. You're all invited to a party at our township hall at noon, November 20th, for our swearing-in ceremony. Uh, but our incoming board of trustees, you can see them there. And I know two of the new members, John Carson and uh, Carrie. Uh, Carrie's here. Carrie's here. I, please stand, Carrie. Thank you. And I don't think John's here, and I know Jack couldn't make it, but uh, the team gets the credit. So we are, to, that's the team that's the defenders of your investment. We set your tax rates, but we also get to decide how we spend your tax dollars. And how we do that, and by the way, I want to say one thing. I've never been, a, we've never been called eye candy, Jerry, but that's interesting. But there's your eye candy. <laughs> um, how we do that is we listen. Um, and that's a really important trait to have when you serve people and you're dealing with their finances. Uh, we listen. What a novel concept. We, maybe our country would be in better shape if, if other communities and federal and state leaders did the same. But I can tell you this group does. Um, if anybody took our Parks and Rec survey, every five years we update it and we ask our residents all the things they want, everything. And it's remarkable to be able to report today that our last Parks and Rec survey, we completed 94% of the projects that our community identified. Uh, it's remarkable, yes. That is the wish list, that's, that's the pie in the sky. And we were able to do that, frankly, because um, we, we've saved up. Previous boards have done a really good job being great financial stewards. Um, and then we also had a lot of federal uh, assistance through COVID that we, our board made the, made the decision. We weren't gonna pay it in wages and benefits to staff. We were gonna put it into things that people could see, touch and feel. Again, things that improve uh, your investment in our community. And it's paying off, and I'll tell you why. Um, we were in a position, and a lot of you know this, and it was mentioned, the, the shifting of, of uh, offices around town. We are vacating the Orient Center, which we've occupied for the last 13 years, and we're moving our Parks and Rec staff to the Great Lakes Athletic Club. Here it is. Um, we're so excited we're able to purchase this facility at auction, out of receivership, for cash, uh, which is remarkable. Uh, and, and for 30 cents on the dollar, essentially, uh, what the current rate would be 
to, uh, to build a facility like this. Why would we do this? One of the number one things that our residents have been asking for, and like I said, we listen, is they want indoor recreation, more of it. They want pools, we have two now, indoor and outdoor. They want an indoor walking track, we have one now. They want a safe place for our students to have meetings and events. We will have that here. So I'm telling you, uh, we are geeked. Uh, these are some of the things that are, are available now and will be available in the very near future. And on Monday, this coming Monday, just a few days from today, uh, we will, uh, at our board meeting, getting a presentation from the company that we hired to help us through this redesign study. Uh, and we'll be kicking off our first phase of construction, our first cycle, which will include moving all of the senior activities uh, to the community center and our staff. So that's the first phase, and we're really excited. I'm not going to show you that because I'd love for you to come Monday and hear us or tune in live, uh, but we are really excited. And, the, and the, other, the other great news is we have been profitable since day one. We took over December 21st. We had 1,800 members. Uh, today we have over 5,000. Um, and I want to give a special shout out to Aaron Watley, Parks and Rec Director, and Chelsea Petrusha, Assistant Parks and Rec Director. And, and I know Aaron would say this if he was here, but the, really the credit does go. Chelsea has been there in the trenches every single day. So uh, we are really excited. And we, I, I like to brag because we have the best team in local government. And if you know me, I'm all about mission and vision, and I make my team do all these crazy things. Um, and they call it Barnett's Force Fun. Fun is in quotes often. I always have fun. They sometimes do. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to check out the state of the township, you can go to ONTV and stream it. Uh, but we had a lot of fun with some of the videos <laughs> that we were able to create in the gym. Um, and we have the best team in local government. And if anybody here is on staff, please stand and be recognized, our team. I don't know who's working in the office today. And I want to make a special introduction to Lizzie Phillips, who just joined us three-ish months ago, and she um, has big shoes to fill because she replaced Julie Savard, who was the admin at the township for 44 years. Uh, so she is three months in, and she's in charge of my life and my schedule, so if you need to get to me, you can come introduce yourself to Lizzie today. Thank you, Lizzie. So we um, understand that the investment that you guys have in our community, whether you live here or your business is here, uh, how can we improve that? And the one thing we hear over and over and over through our community survey is we want more parks and we want more amenities. So we talked about Great Lakes Athletic Club. Uh, that project, again, by the way, we will be moving in senior activities, the senior center, uh, and our staff around obviously the same similar time that the schools will be moving into the Orient Center. So uh, we're looking at the end of the first quarter, beginning of the second quarter, uh, so it's coming quickly. Um, but the other things we're doing is we continue to find opportunities to green up our community. And this is one that we're really excited about. If you drive down Baldwin, uh, you know about the dragon that landed there a few years ago. That was a really cool grant we received to build that park. Thanks a lot to Jenny Boddy, who was kind of the, the lead on that project. Um, but we are building another pocket park. And you can see from the, from the earth, the way they're cutting that out, it looks like a tree. Uh, we're going to have some really cool interac interactive things there. Um, but we are in process, it's under construction. Um, part of this prop project is gonna to be to honor the history and heritage of the Gingeville District. I know Mike Flood, our board members here, his family's been there for generations. Uh, and so we're really excited about that project. So the question is, how are we doing? Not just asking you all, but not just patting ourselves on the back for the great things we're doing, but really um, listening to other experts. And Niche is a nationwide organization, and as you can see here, they tell us we're doing pretty good because we are, we're living as a? Wow, some people are awake. Um, how many people love that, by the way? Yes, it's our identity. For the very first community survey we put out, um, one of the questions we asked was, is it time for us to rebrand? Is that, you know, some people think that's kind of cheesy, hokey. And you would have thought the people that were born and raised here were, think, it was like we were stealing children out of their bedrooms at night because that is who we are and don't you ever change it. So what we've done is we've really embraced it. And that's what everything we do is about. Having 42 lakes and 36 square miles, I tell that I have the opportunity to serve on a couple national boards. I had the opportunity to bring some big city mayors to uh, our community this summer and they stayed in Orion and they were blown away by the recreational amenities. So we are doing it right. Um, just yesterday I had a conversation with Dennis Quaid's executive producer, if you all know him. Um, they are looking to bring his show, Viewpoint, to do a national story about our community. And I agree with what was said by Matt and Jerry. We aren't Orion Township. We aren't the village. We are Lake Orion. 
Uh, so we're really excited about that. So again, one more way to check to see how we're doing is ask our residents. And as you can see, um, in the most recent survey, our residents are very satisfied with the services we're providing and the things we're doing. And during COVID, um, I told our directors, we were tired. What was the motto we had? No one remembers. Where's Tammy? We said, slow down and have fun. Did we do that? No, we haven't. We, we broke our own rule. We keep doing more stuff, and the team gets frustrated, but, but they're along for the great ride. And the other thing that's important about a strong community is a strong business community, and that's what you are. So to talk a little bit about how we're doing in that area, um, this is our new interactive development map. You can go on our website, and we get the question all the time, what's going there? So instead of calling our offices, which you're, we're happy to have you do that, you can go on our website, you can click on these things, and you can see um, you can see site plans, you can see elevations, you can see everything that's been submitted. It's a really great tool. Um, and what I wanna to report to you a little bit on the business growth is we took a risk in 2016 by creating a corridor improvement authority. Um, and by the way, the other thing that makes our community unique is having a special needs baseball field. <laughs> there, goes, there goes Susie. And if you haven't been to the Miracle Field, you need to, you need to see Susie. October 26th, we're having a huge party. Um, we want you all there. Um, but uh, that's another thing that makes, and so you left, you're leaving before I got to that point, so I'm throwing it in. But um, that's something else that sets us apart. But we, we took a risk. We, we borrowed money to widen Brown Road and do all the beautification on Baldwin. Had, had we done nothing, Baldwin would look like M24. Overgrown grass, it gets cut four times a year. So we invested eight and a half million into those two projects, and I'm so excited to report, and Mike Flood's been on our case every year since, that this year we will be uh, we'll be fully servicing that bond debt, and we're on track to pay that off early. And you can see the results of our investment. Yes. We're not only going to pay off that debt earlier uh, than we anticipated, but we have great things happening, like the Hyatt House Hotel. It's amazing when you drive by at night now, the lights are on. It's like, wow, we have a beautiful brand new hotel opening soon. Um, University of Michigan has rated us as a five-star community for economic growth and entrepreneurship. Uh, for seven years now, since 2017. I want to thank Gary Roberts. Raise your hand, Gary. He's our partner <laughs> in economic development, and uh, we are hitting it out of the park, literally. Um, and then the other thing about our community, I don't think anybody said it out loud. We're joined by Sergeant Steve Kramer um, of the Sheriff's Office. By the way, his sister won't respond to my DMs, but his sister is Jana Kramer, the famous country singer. Um, so, but he's way more important than she is. Uh, but we have the safest city. This is not, this is, this is audited FBI data that every community has to submit. Uh, we're number 18 in the state last year, uh, but we're the safest community of a population of more than 25,000 in the entire state of Michigan. That's a fact, and that's remarkable. And again, that's one more reason why people want to invest here in our community. So as we kind of wrap here, I just want to rapid fire a few other things that are setting us apart and letting you know that your investment is growing here, um, but we are getting national recognition. Uh, a team of our, a uh, team, team from Orion went just uh, last week, Jenny and Julia and Kim, uh, and Sam was on the team but couldn't make it, to the America in Bloom Symposium. Again, this is a nationwide, a national organization. We've been winning awards every year since we started competing. I think this is our third year. Um, and the exciting news is next year, they chose Orion to be the host of our national symposium. So we will be hosting people from all over the country. So if you want to take an opportunity to join our team, uh, we'd love you to see Jenny or Julia or Kim because we're gonna have lots of opportunities to entertain folks from all over the country next year. Uh, and it's this time next year, correct? Um, but also it's an opportunity if you have businesses and things, we'd love to be extra in bloom next year. So please consider that. And then on the infrastructure front, you have to have good infrastructure. There's Brian Burney. He's <laughs> he missed the state of the township, so we wanted to make sure we put him in a bunch of different slides, and I just re, re, re but he's a triathlete, and so there he is. He's been running around busy, uh, but just to rapid fire through some of the infrastructure improvements that have been happening, we know this roundabout finally opened, Clarkson and Baldwin, much needed improvement. People are still learning about how to use that one, but uh, it's getting better as we go. <laughs> Uh, and then the big one, GM is obviously investing in their $4 billion project. Uh, Chief of Staff Sam Timko and I were able to tour a couple, few weeks ago, and um, I've never been in a facility like this in my life. It's, it's a remarkable facility. It's scheduled to open in summer of 2026 for full production. 
um, and the railroad will start running again too, if you all remember what that was like. But we were able to get a direct appropriation from the state of over $10 million uh, to not just resurface this road, which was the original plan, but to rebuild all the infrastructure around the facility. And then last, we launched a civic engagement tool, and this is where I need your help. Um, we would love for you to go to our website. It's very easy. You can sign up for text alerts. This is not so we can send you all the info about all the classes happening at the athletic club. This is so we can let you know about uh, dangerous situations, road closures, um, anything that would, would be public safety related. If we ever had to do a boil water alert, um, somehow they made me dress up like that. Um, around the 4th of July to push this, but we are trying to find better ways to communicate with our residents, and this is the newest one. If you go to our homepage, you'll be able to click a link, sign up very quickly uh, for our alerts. So with that, I'd like to end with this slide always. How are we doing all these things? Um, and this is not fake news, this is real. Uh, I know we're all tired of politics. Who's excited for November 6th, the day after the election? Yeah, me too. Um, but this is real data, uh, just like our crime data gets sent to the FBI, all of our financial statements get sent to Lansing. And um, so how are we doing? Now this isn't how we collect taxes per capita per person, but this is a good way to compare. And this is what we call the frugal index. Compared to all our neighbors, we're doing all these amazing things and we're doing it more efficiently than anybody else. So that's the best way to end the slide. Thank you so much for the privilege to serve and thank you most importantly to the board and the staff that deserves all the credit. Thank you. Well, thank you to all of our speakers, thank you to our sponsors, and thank you for coming out today and spending the afternoon with your leadership teams. Thank you, and have a great afternoon. Again, pick out Lake Orion Reviews and our Builder's Guide and some Orion Living magazines on your way out. Have a great afternoon.